You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found in the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we are welcoming slash preparing to learn from Jeff Tews of Bright Star Senior Living and Bright Star Care. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm good, James. Glad to be here. This is awesome. I am so excited to talk to you because I don't think that we've ever had anyone dealing with senior living stuff. And all I see across the city is senior living stuff popping up. Sure, sure. So yeah. you got to tell me, how did you end up in this business? Well, um, it was uh, really a start of this was my mom had mid-range Alzheimer's. Oh. She lived in central Minnesota. Okay. And I was a distant caregiver. My sister was there in town providing care for her, and I was struggling to try to find assistance for her. Oh. So I was a, a participant sure. in this process. Okay. And at the time, I was working at a bank. Okay. And uh, thought I had a big job. Sure. <laughs> and uh, 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 responsibility across the U.S. and on sure. an airplane every week. and. But yet still felt really frustrated about oh. about not being able to help out. Okay. Um, the project I was working on at the bank came to an end, mm -hmm. and we parted amiably, amiably, amiably <laughs> and um, they gave me a year's severance. And oh, nice. I got a chance to take uh, what my wife calls the summer of Jeff. <laughs> and um, at, at some good guidance I received was to really think about this is an opportunity. I was uh, 52 years old or sure. 53 years old at that okay. time. And it was a good opportunity to think about what's the one more thing I'm going to do sure. um, in my career. And um, had the opportunity to have somebody guide me around thinking about what are you good at? Okay. Uh, what do you like to do? Mm -hmm. what, what, you know, where's your passion? Sure. And, and what do you want to do? So, you know, I looked at my, my 33 years of corporate experience. Sure. And... Um, knew that I was good at leading large teams. I okay. had people across the U.S. and knew that I could uh, talk to people about what their role is and, and uh, pretty good at strategic planning so everybody understood the mission and what their, sure. what their piece was okay. and empowering them then to do the work. So I, I had been successful in that regard. Nice. And, um, uh, the, and, and then I also knew that I was pretty good at strategic planning, but I was lousy at... Uh, day-to-day uh, -day kind of grind. Oh, sure. Um, okay. Uh, the, uh, I was, wasn't an inventor. I mm -hmm. wouldn't have the patience to go through inventing a process. Sure. And so I met up with a franchise broker. Okay. And uh, Chip said, I, you know, let me let me take you through what this is like. Sure. And uh, I think you have some experience with franchising. I and, do, yeah. And uh, so the, the, the great thing is that they do have a concept and they – have mm -hmm. proven the model. It's made money. Mm -hmm. um, they've been able to provide good service. Yeah. And um, so th there was a brand new franchise or with Shelly Sun as her name, and she sure. was fr uh, franchising Bright Star Care, which was home care and staffing business. Sure. And um, she didn't have a broker. She only had three uh, branches open. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Kind of spread around the U.S. So she was fairly new? She was brand new at okay. franchises. She had run her operation for four years. Okay. Uh, independent. Mm -hmm. And was just franchising. So Chip said, she doesn't have a broker. Mm -hmm. And you need a franchise uh, experience. Sure. So let's give this a run. All right. So we went down and met with her. And, and Chip was wise enough at that point to say, well, your wife... Uh, my wife, Susan, was uh, managing the lab at the VA hospital in Madison. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, she was going to keep her great uh, federal government job. Sure. and and Benefits ben and ben all, right? Benefits and everything. And um, so he said, but she should still come along for this experience because she's going to be very engaged. You're going to run your own business. You're going to sure. be uh, more engaged than you've ever been mm -hmm. as a, a corporate employee. Sure. And again, I, I thought I had big jobs, and I thought I was very engaged <laughs> till I <laughs> till I started my own business. Sure. Um, and so we we met um, Shelley. We fell in love with the concept and her vision uh, for it, and and the differentiating factors that she had against um, other people that were in that um, market. Sure. And um, so uh, in in a kind of a pivotal moment, we were down at. Uh, Bright Star's office in Gurney and doing a discovery visit. Sure. And um, 
Bonnie um, was working for Shelly, and um, there was uh, her fourth year anniversary with Shelly, and there was lots of noise in the office, and Susan had been there all day with Bonnie, and I had been out uh, with a social worker going out and talking to referral sources and sure. figured out that I could do that. Okay. It was, it was uh, <laughs> work that I could do. Sure. But, um, so there's a party going on in the office, and Shelly's got a cake for Bonnie's four-year anniversary, and there's caregivers, and there's referral sources, and the office is oh, full nice. of people. And the phone rings, and Bonnie answers it, and what Susan and I call the dome of compassion comes down around Bonnie. Mm -hmm. And while all this noise is going on, and Shelly's saying, come on, Bonnie, hurry up, get off the phone, i got to get going. Sure. And um, Bonnie says to the person on the phone, and we can only hear one side, but we can sure. hear her say, oh, that must be really hard for you. What's going on with your mom? Mm. Well, the, the mom was being discharged from the hospital at 4 o'clock. Oh. It's, it's like 3.30. <laughs> and she, <laughs> she's going to need uh, somebody to provide care overnight. Sure. And while Bonnie's talking, she's uh, got a partner next to her who is uh, working on the schedule already by just listening to her. Mm -hmm. So the two of them are making magic go. So when the, when the calls come to an end, Bonnie says, well, I'll be there at 6 o'clock, and I'm going to bring Susie, the caregiver, with me because we've already got her scheduled to come and help you. Mm -hmm. And you could just feel the relief from that daughter oh, on nice. the phone. And, and um, you know, that, at that moment, Susan and I really kind of looked at each other and said, uh -huh. this is something we want to do. Sure. Um, so that peace of mind that I had been missing, mm -hmm. I could see that, that it was going to be able to be provided. Uh -huh. And I thought, what better could I do sure. than to provide this to families? Sure. Um, so that was the, the very start where we said we we're going to do this. I said I was going to do it. On the drive back from Gurney to, to uh, Wanakee, we started talking about it. And, mm -hmm. and Susan said, well, you're going to need a Bonnie. Mm. And she said, you know, I'm not going to be able to sit on the sidelines sure. and watch you pay somebody what I take home right. to do something that I could do. Sure. So she said, and we'd only been married a year. Oh, wow. And, okay. and she said, uh, I, I, I want to join you in this. So uh, at that point, we uh, we made the decision to go into this together. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. And um, so she quit her job benefits quit, and all. She gave a three week notice and okay. uh, off we went. Sure. Um, we How took, long ago was this? This was in 2006. Okay. At the end of 2006. Sure. So 13 years ago. So right before the bad day for the country financially, right? Ex exactly. Um, the the uh, great thing about the senior care relative to that mm -hmm. uh, is that. Um, and, and particularly in the Dane County area, you've got mm -hmm. the state government. Sure. You've got the university. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got um, high-tech uh, industries mm -hmm. that generally have pretty good pension plans. Sure. So we were unaffected by oh, very uh, cool. 2008, 2009. We, nice. In 2007 was our first full year, and um, we had, a, had about a 60% growth sure. in wow. 2008. And we had another 60% growth in 2009. And wow. then a little bit of drop to about 40% sure. in 2010. So Very we cool. were unaffected. So the, the, uh, the magic that happened mm -hmm. was um, really our understanding that this is a very personal business. Sure. That we have families that, that obviously, as I've already said, that, that are looking for peace of mind. Sure. And somebody that they can trust. Mm -hmm. So the model ha that has... Um, an RN case manager involved with each case mm -hmm. at no additional charge. It's in our rate. Sure. And um, having um, uh, uh, really qualified caregivers. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and then we also learned that it was a business that really is built on reputation. Mm -hmm. And so that high quality was really important. Sure. Our very first client. Um, and, and I'll use just her first name. Sure. Mar right. Mar Martha was our very first client, and uh, she was um, had been a year in a skilled nursing facility in Madison. Okay. And she had had a fall, had a stroke, um, had diabetes, pretty oh, no. bad. So she had a wound on her leg, and she really wanted to go home to die. Oh, okay. And um, she they needed she needed around the clock care. Sure. And they uh, her daughter. Pat and I met by a referral source at that skilled nursing facility who said, mm -hmm. 
we don't, the doctor says, no, she shouldn't go, but I want to try to help her. And sure. Can you help her? And, and, um, uh, I had been, uh, brainwashed that the answer is yes. Mm. Every time, <laughs> Every right? Every time the answer is yes. Uh, in our, in our training with bright star. And so I said, I don't know. I'll, I, you know, this is a difficult case. I'm going to have to find out. She needed to be sure. driven into dialysis three times a week. She had, oh. she had, um, diabetes. She had this wound on her leg. Sure. She would, um, paralyzed on one side so she had a, a hoyer lift to get in and out of the wheelchair into oh, bed. Oh wow, okay. So lots of things that sure. weren't great for our very first client. <laughs> right. Um, we had a, a wonderful nurse named Joanne who was okay. uh, part-time with us and she had been a uh, uh, certified nursing assistant mm -hmm. uh, working in the home while she got her her nursing license. Oh nice, and okay. While she was working at St. Mary's Hospital and, and uh, so we went out to the home and Joanne, the nurse, just took charge. She sure. said, well, this carpet's got to go in the oh. bedroom. The, all this stuff in the closet, I need that for my supplies. And these dressers have got to go. And the daughter was, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. We want to get mom home. So they were heavily. And this is, at, this is at the woman's house? At the woman's home. Wow. Yes. Um, out, on, um, out on the Wisconsin River. Okay. So it's a ways away. Sure. And they wanted somebody to live in. And we didn't have any live-ins on sure. our bench that Susan had been interviewing. Mm -hmm. So the second half of the equation comes into play as Susan places back in that time, uh, everyone was using the newspaper mm -hmm. and Craigslist. Oh, sure. We're about the only two. Uh, there weren't all the websites. Right, uh, right. place to, to find people. Mm -hmm. um, she places a small ad for a live-in and gets, at, at that time, there were a lot of employees, mm -hmm. unlike today. Yeah, uh, right. She, she, got, she got to talk to quite a few people. Sure. And um, she found Jackie. Jackie came into the office, and, and Jackie was a, uh, is a, an immigrant from Cameroon, West Africa. Okay. She had been here a couple of years and uh, had been providing uh, care for people. Sure. And, and was a very compassionate person. You could tell that right from the start. She talked mm -hmm. about her village that she came from and how everyone oh, nice. cared for each other. Sure. Um, but she was in, in some difficulty. Her um, husband had, they had a dispute and he kicked her out. Oh. She had two small kids that she was only seeing on the weekend, and she was living on a friend's couch. Wow. So what a great match mm -hmm. for us to sure. find her a place to live. Right. And, um, and, and it was a good match. So she met Pat and Martha, mm -hmm. and they hit it off right oh, away. Cool. Uh, and we got a chance to get that, get that case, um, case started. Susan also then worked with Jackie to say, you know, you have some rights on tr in the U.S. of seeing your kids, right? And helped her get some legal assistance oh, and cool. helped her. So we, you know, we recognize that the caregiver community mm -hmm. uh, has needs also, mm -hmm. and they're not treated. They hadn't been treated very well, sure, um, because there were a lot of them, and um, they, they weren't paid that well, right? Um, so we made decisions at that point, and both of us coming off from jobs that had full benefits, we made decision at that point that we were going to differentiate ourselves with caregivers around offering health care mm -hmm. benefits, um, paid time off, which she had to explain to some people that really that um, we're going to pay you to be gone. Wow. You, you work these hours, you're going to sure. bank these hours. Sure. It, that was something that a lot of them didn't understand. Huh. Um, a 401k that we would match. Okay. Um, uh, so we so we we understood they needed care. Now we've got an employee assistance plan that is working really well for them too. So mm -hmm. we uh, we learned a lot from that very first client that mm -hmm. that indeed peace of mind. And when that happens, it really it sure. it feels good to our heart, and it certainly helps the family. It sure. builds our reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, we differentiate ourselves around not. Uh, approaching it first as a business, but approaching it first, what can we do for you? Sure. And um, that, that we need to care for the caregivers at sure. the same time. That's got to help you keep caregivers, I imagine. It I, does. I imagine a lot of businesses, well, I can tell you just from looking at resumes that come in to Calls on Call, that people working at senior facilities is common, and people working at three to five senior facilities in any given year right. is I'm looking at this going, how did you put six jobs <laughs> over the past year that you're at each one for a month, maybe two? Yeah. And yep. they're all these senior care things. And from my point of view, I'm like, um, the work that they do has got to be hard. And you, you almost have to have a passion for it. Right. 
Right. Um, so there's nothing that I could do. Right. But on the flip side, it's also a job that you knew what you signed up for, and they weren't sticking around. Right. Right. So hopefully that helps you. It does. Retain. It did. It it has become over the last two years. It's become our number one um, task is to work on employee engagement and sure. retention. Okay. Uh, we are uh, pleased to be named one of the top twenty five employers in Madison. Oh wow! Uh, by the Congrats. Wisconsin State Journal. Yeah. Sure. Um, and that that isn't just doesn't just happen. <laughs> no, that, I that imagine not. Took a lot of took a lot of work on our team's part for a sure. couple of years to really. Uh, make that recognition happen. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So when, when Susan, and uh, kind of back to the start, when mm-hmm. um, Susan decided to join me, and again, what a husband and wife team sure. start, starting a business, what that's like. Mm-hmm. There's, there's obviously a lot of stress about it. You wonder where's the money going to start? Right. Um, you know, who's going to make what decisions, right. all of those things that are going on. Um, so the, the, the great thing is Susan and I had a chance to talk to some other couples Oh, okay. uh, during this period that we were thinking about it, she decided we were going to do this, and it was going to take us a while to get Bright Star started. So we got sure. a chance to visit with some other couples that are working together. And one piece of advice that um, it really went back to th- that um, that same advice that I got about: think about what you're good at and what mm-hmm. you like to do, sure. and and carve that out as your piece that you're sure. going to that you're going to own. Mm-hmm. And uh, Susan is uh, having l- run a lab. Mm-hmm. It's very technical. Sure, a lot of process procedures, mm-hmm. um, safety uh, safety information that's needed, sure. uh, and all of that sort of thing. And managing a group of forty five or fifty lab techs. Sure. Uh, multiple schedules, mm-hmm. um, 24 hour, seven day a week kind of coverage. So it was a natural for Susan to be the office manager. Okay. And to uh, what we call branch manager to really have that operations piece and mm-hmm. understanding the systems that Bright Star was going to provide us and sure. and the, the uh, hiring process and all of that. Mm-hmm. And certainly writing procedures because we at the very start we, we uh, had some. Um, Guidelines and some operations manuals that Bright Star provided, but we were figuring out that wasn't going to be quite enough for us, and uh-huh. there were things that needed to be done. So sure. she was, uh, she she loves that, and and she really took that on. And on on the other side, I knew that um, the the whole strategic planning, the financial mm-hmm. analysis piece of our work, and uh, the the marketing referral mm-hmm. source development was something mm-hmm. that I had a passion for and that I that I thought I would be pretty good at. Sure. So the advice we'd gotten from other couples was figure out what you're good at and what you want and talk about it back and forth. But when it comes down to a hard decision, the person that owns that part of the business okay. makes that decision and the other one's just got to support. Gotcha. At, with feedback and, and sure. so forth. And we have, we've lived that for 13 years now, and it wow. really has worked well. Okay. Um, you know, so you kind of draw the line in the sand that you're the marketing person, so to speak, and she's the, the operations, or yep. she's more operations. Okay. Yep. Yep. Office yep. management exactly. and stuff like that. Operations, okay. right. Um, and, and it got tested early because uh, we, we started with, uh, with our first customer, Marcia, Martha, in. Um, uh, December, right okay. before Christmas time. Sure. And um, by the time we got to July, mm-hmm. we were building our business based on the the referral source understanding of the quality we were providing, and we sure. were different. Okay. And uh, so business started to really grow, and we were getting calls from people that were leaving the hospitals in Madison, going to Janesville. Their oh. home was in Janesville. Okay. And uh, so I said to Susan, you know, I'm going to go down to Janesville and just kick around and see what other home care, uh, and this was just in the home care environment, sure. what other home care providers there are and talk to some referral sources and see if our model would be something that would match up with them. Sure. And um, uh, I found that there was a need. Oh, nice. And uh, went to a, a, re- a networking event and introduced myself as being from Madison, but I also have grew up in a small town, and I know that you probably don't want to do business with Madison. Sure. And that you're here in Janesville. We're going to look for a manager here in Janesville that will be the the, the branch manager and, and the owner. Sure. Uh, in a sense, from a from a um, mental perspective, the mm-hmm. owner of this branch. And uh, met through that, met Pam. Oh, and, nice. And... Uh, 
Pam worked, uh, we hired Pam. Okay. She came on. She was a one woman show to start with, with hiring and marketing and scheduling. And then she brought in a couple of people and built a branch. And um, that, that branch has been, been doing just uh, doing just great. So uh, oh, wow. she worked for us for 10, 10 and a half years. Wow. And uh, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful match. Nice. So I, that was one of those examples, because Susan said, when I said I'm going to go down and look at she said, Jeff, I can't work any harder. <laughs> I'm already, <laughs> I'm sure. already pulling my this hair off here. I can't work this. I said, OK, well, remember my background. I'm OK managing people in distant cities and giving them responsibility. Sure. And we gave Pam profit and loss accountability and full mm -hmm. disclosure on the financials and sure. and let her uh, build that. And mm -hmm. she, Pam loved it. Uh, it turned out to work really well for us. So it's oh, a nice. model where we've duplicated now. Sure. So in our home care business, um, we have um, expanded from that Janesville. We expanded into a, a Baraboo office oh, wow. and a lacrosse office. Oh. Uh, those are uh, a few years ago. In the last year, um, the Bright Star owners that were in Racine and Kenosha mm -hmm. uh, decided they wanted to retire. These are other franchisees. Other franchisees and okay. that had and, uh, had, a, had a good business going in Racine and Kenosha. Sure. And um, had had decided it was time for them to go. They had tried to sell it to somebody outside. Mm -hmm. wasn't able to quite make the financials work for sure. somebody. Mm -hmm. They were on the edge. Okay. Um, edge of profitability. Uh, uh, profitability. Okay. Yeah, they had been doing really well, but it had dropped off. Sure. And uh, so we went and explored it with them, and and decided that uh, they had a. a piece of the business that we didn't have a real good relationship on or understanding of and that okay. was some skilled care uh -huh. um, and uh, so we we decided that we would give them uh, what they were asking for for the business mm -hmm. and um, t we took that over about a year and a half ago okay same thing happened in Milwaukee oh. and so uh, now just one year ago now we uh, picked up the Milwaukee branch so we have the whole lakefront uh, section Milwaukee County, Racine County, Kenosha wow. County, okay. extending all the way across to La Crosse other than um, our good uh, Bright Star neighbors in Waukesha County. Okay. Otherwise, we've got that whole southern strip of the state now. Wow. Okay. And in home care, I think we have about 650 employees. Do you really? So, yeah. Whoa. So it has, uh, <laughs> I have my hand full, and I think that's a mess. <laughs> it's got, yeah, well, and, and with that, we've, we've grown um, to that same model we used with Pam, mm -hmm. um, so that the branch manager is a branch manager in each one of those. Mm -hmm. We've now um, placed um, a director of operations over those six branches. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not... We, we couldn't, we were limit, we, Susan and I were the limiting factor. Okay. We needed to start to make sure these um, branches are operating independently. Sure. Um, and then coordinating their efforts was uh, was something that we needed help with. Sure. And uh, so uh, Wendy, uh, about a year ago, uh, became our director of operations for home care. Okay. Um, and, uh, and and that's been working really well. We've still got some gr uh, opportunity to get to break even in both uh, Racine sure. and Kenosha and and uh, Milwaukee, but it's okay. a it's a reputation business, and you you gotta you gotta build that sure. one customer. Did you at say a time. opportunity to break even? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you build up the profitability over the course of time. Over time, so. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that uh, that's our home care business and how it has grown and how Susan and I started. We we had um, in the Bright Star model they also had uh, medical staffing, mm -hmm. which is providing the same employees we've got to skilled nursing facilities, assisted oh, sure. living, mm -hmm. hospitals, uh, clinics, anybody who's uh, mm -hmm. looking for CNAs, nurses, sure. uh, for the most part. And so we started. Um, Oh, ten years ago, okay. We started uh, dabbling in that. I realized that that wasn't going to work so well for me. Sure. I was passionate about the care for families. Um, I could go out and talk to social workers about the good care we're providing. Mm -hmm. But I, this is a the staffing is a business to business mm -hmm. deal, mm -hmm. and it's generally working, particularly now with the consolidations that are happening, and it's working with large businesses. Right. And you're writing a contract, and yes. you're you're thinking about again back to I'm not a detail guy, right? 
Um, so There's I wasn't a lot of details there. A lot of details in yeah. those and, and at risk sure. kind of details sure. if you screw it up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, uh, we looked for for somebody that could come and join us, and we mm -hmm. found Justin. Uh, Justin had been um, doing this work on the West Coast for, with large agencies, and he okay. had done really good work with it. He got kind of uh, tired of the fast life in, All right. <laughs> in L.A. and Phoenix. And, what I need is more snow, And right? <laughs> decided to come home to Madison, where his twin brother was starting to have, uh, he was having nephews and nieces being born. Oh, and sure. He worked with a cousin, I think, building uh, hardwood paddle boards. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, so he was doing that and decided, you know, maybe I should go back into the real world and get a job that has insurance and sure. some other things. And <laughs> We happened to pick his uh, resume up on Career Builder, and he's been with us now for 10 years. Oh, wow. And uh, he's built, as a director of operations of that staffing, he's built a, built a, a, a wonderful team. Oh, uh, very cool. Around that. So, yeah. So he's running, he's running that piece. Okay. Um, in um, 2011, mm -hmm. at a Bright Star Owners Conference where – um, Shelly and the franchisor gets everybody together and sure. rah rah rah. Yeah, and right. <laughs> some training and some things going on. She revealed the next kind of phase of her uh, vision that she has for Bright Star, mm -hmm. and that is Bright Star Senior Living. Okay. Which is um, assisted living, memory care uh, communities. We don't oh, call them a facility, sure. but okay. a, uh, buildings. Sure. Uh, and a community. And differentiating that care also with the high quality. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so she, she asked for, um, gosh, there probably were at that time um, maybe 75 owners mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you know, it's going to take somebody that's got their business kind of together, but who would be interested in? being the first uh, franchisee sure. of this new model. Oh, and so she just called it out like that at the she meeting? She called it out at the meeting, <laughs> and 15 people raised their hand. All right. Uh, I was one of them. Okay. Um, Susan happened to be out of the room at the time. <laughs> she put your hand down. <laughs> she would have. Um, and uh, so, you know, that kind of comes and goes, and she she was on a call or whatever she was doing. She sure. came back in later. She said, well, you know, what did I miss? I said, well, not much. <laughs> <laughs> We're just changing the direction. <laughs> and um, so uh, play it out over time. That that took um, took about three years for okay. them to really get to the spot where they mm -hmm. said, okay, we're ready to, uh, sure. uh, two, two years, I guess. And, and uh, through a selection process, they chose uh, Susan and I as franchisees to, t to host the first, uh, first one okay. of those. And um, in franchising, the franchisor has got to build the model mm -hmm. and have got to prove it. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have James car wash or dog washing service, you've mm -hmm. got to you got to sure. document. Okay, what do I need to buy for mm -hmm. equipment? How much do I charge? What sure. kind of training are you going to provide? Mm -hmm. And the Federal Trade Commission makes sure that you're going to not take money from people and right. not support them. Yep. So it took them that year to do sure. that. And they built a building uh, down on the southwest side of Madison. Mm -hmm. And um, we were engaged with them, but it was theirs to build and theirs to run. Oh, so they started it. They put up the building essentially and for you, and kind managed of more or less? It, and managed it. Wow. Uh, we, were, we were there helping. It helped sure. pick the lot and helped get through the Madison, um, um, uh, what's the process, building process, uh, the approval whole, process yep, and yep. Uh, through the city of Madison. That mm -hmm. was a, a fun, first sure. time fun Challenging. adventure for me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so we helped them through that part of it, and we helped hire a Bonnie, who is our executive director now. Mm -hmm. uh, we helped them hire Bonnie. I had worked with Bonnie at another assisted living community uh, where we provided care to uh, assisted living clients mm -hmm. who were having a difficult time. Maybe they had surgery and they needed more care than the assisted living was contracted sure. to provide, and so uh, Bonnie, as the director, was say you know you really ought to call bright star and mm -hmm. and we worked together uh with clients and I, and I was so impressed with her customer focus yeah. every time we had a client we met um she understood what was needed um when you get um a um another caregiver coming into a community there often can be tension where oh, the sure. other 
the other workers there uh, don't want that person there mm -hmm. or think they're better or whatever sure. happens. <laughs> and we were always able to focus on the customer and work through those couple of times we had that. So I was sure. really impressed with working with Bonnie and, and her, base, uh, her base compassion. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we started talking about this, Susan, I asked Bonnie, would you have breakfast with us? Sure. And I uh, want to talk to you about an opportunity. And um, she said, sure. <laughs> talk, talk is free. That's, right? That'd be, fi that'd be fine. <laughs> I and like so, breakfast. Yeah. So we, we had the conversation, and she was interested in the model. Uh, okay. We were able to describe the model. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, th then I, I said, well, there's going to be one catch with this, and that you're going to sure. have to work for Bright Star for the first maybe two years while oh, they sure. go through the building process and mm -hmm. then run it for a, about a year till till they get it to break even and they prove the model and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about that <laughs> so she went away and we didn't call her for a couple of weeks okay and then she called us back and said okay I'll talk to him all right so we sent her down to Gurney and she met uh, the managers that would be overseeing the work that she was going to do and sure. she met Shelly and the vision and she fell in love with it, and, and she said, okay, let's go. Nice. So they ran it for about a year. Okay. And uh, then we then we took it over in 2015. Okay. So um, we, we're just right now at four years. Wow. Uh, four years with that one. So after, um, again, thinking about where does this business go and, sure. the, and the opportunities we want to provide employees mm -hmm. and the growth and there wasn't a lot of room for promotions or sure. moving people into new roles. And so as we did with our home care branch in terms of adding, we said, we think we can we can build another one of these. Sure. So uh, in November, we opened uh, another Bright Star Senior Living that's that was ours to build. You're talking just a few months ago. In November, yeah. Wow. Yeah. In Madison here? In Wanakee. In Wanakee, okay. Yep. Oh, yep. very cool. Yeah. So we have two of those going. Okay. Um, we're... Um, um, yeah, and and it's a good complement to our home care. Sure. To have uh, the um, assisted living option because mm -hmm. we're caring for people in the home, and and mm -hmm. it does get to be a time with some people that uh, their qual their quality of life, the sure. amount of care that they require, mm -hmm. uh, the cost that's involved. Because sure. if we're needing to be there at home twenty four seven with one person. Mm -hmm dedicated to them it's an expensive week sure um, and for about half that amount you could be in a in a high quality assisted living setting gotcha and so sometimes it's a financial decision sure. sometimes it's a social situation mm -hmm. where they're home alone and and uh, maybe they don't need care all the time sure but that loneliness issue mm -hmm. the daughter lives in California or sure and so they make that decision that uh uh, uh, the kind of social stimulation would be sure. would be a good thing too. Plus, we've got a great chef. He'll make your eggs <laughs> to order. <laughs> nice. Uh, and uh, we make uh, ninety five percent of the ingredients that come in the kitchen are fresh. Oh wow! And uh, so we uh, we food is a big deal. I bet. You, know, you think about okay. That's probably it, half there, the game, you know, it's right? Half, it's a big part of the game. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of the combination that uh, we put together in terms of our business. Sure. So you I want to backpedal a little bit because you to the time when you raised your hand, mm -hmm. Susan was out. At what point did you break the news saying, hey, <laughs> Susan, um, funny story. We're going to do this other thing. It actually came up during during the conference. It came up. Somebody mentioned I said, yeah, well, there's 15 of us. You sure. Know. Yeah, you know, we'll just gotta go along with it. Right, but, right. but once she started to think about it and think about the compliment it was, she was there. She just sure. wasn't there to <laughs> help make the decision on raising her hand. And we ended up having to uh, write a uh, almost like a college theme paper about why we would be the best franchisee. Oh. So it was part of their selection process. And so you had to kind of sell yourselves. Yeah, and you know we were really busy in our home care business, and I th I think it was due on a on a Thursday night and Wednesday night at midnight, we're sure, still just cramming, still cr cranking it out, <laughs> like I did uh, through most of my education. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <it's laughs> nothing gets stuff done like a priority, right? But but it was uh, it was really around the uh, you know the d their decision to come here. One, it was close to Gurney. Sure. So they the, the travel to here certainly was a factor. Mm -hmm. um, but also we had built a really strong reputation. We were at Madison and Dane County at the time was. 
the number one franchise in uh, single franchise unit in the okay. in the United States. Sure. Uh, I think there's a 330 of them spread around the country. Are there now. really? Okay. And um, yeah, so it's grown fast in that sure. in that time period, and uh, we've been in that top three um, of individual branches, sure. and now multi-unit branch we're in that top three of the multi-unit branch. So we had already proven the mm -hmm. the quality model here, and, sure. and knew that that was going to be a factor. So our name recognition was it was and continues to be pretty high sure highly rated here in the madison area interesting so, yeah so things are going well it sounds like things are going well we could um we uh you know you make a model sure and we're behind the model relative to the number of residents so okay. again you start looking at okay well it'd be about time to start having some profit sure um, <laughs> that was but, time. but that, you know that's all about building the model and making sure, sure you got the kind of support to get it's a long-term mm -hmm. it's a long-term play sure so. sure no but, that's fair that's fair but going from a home care business mm -hmm. one of the one of the changes is finding a great banker mm. because you go from um, a cash business sure much like your call center business mm -hmm. You go from you answer a call, you charge a customer, you mm -hmm. pay the employee. Sure. Here we would do an hour of work care in the home. We'd right. pay the employee. We collect, collect it. Have no AR mm -hmm. or virtually hardly any AR. Sure. You've got, uh, uh, you've got a cash business going on. Now you turn around and say, okay, we need, uh, we're going to have two seven million dollar buildings. Right. Uh, the wonderful thing is that we had just a great experience with uh, Wisconsin Business Development okay. and the SBA oh, uh, sure, sure. leading us through the SBA process. Yeah. Um, uh, Dan Byler is left there, but Nick, I can't remember Nick's name right now, but sure. they, they led us through those two loans mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, and an operation loan to for the Wanakee one also to wow. run, run it up to break even. That's huge. So, yeah, it, it well. It's a huge amount of money, too. <laughs> <laughs> but having that uh, ability to be able to say, "Yeah, we want to do this," mm -hmm. having our base uh, home care business be strong and financially stable um, was it was certainly a positive impact on them saying, "Yes, we can sell this case sure. to the SBA." Right, and um, you know those are great great loans. They've got great terms, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know so so that has worked out really well. But having um, uh, a, a great banker mm -hmm. uh, is as a piece of that also to be there and give us that kind of advice, be able to sure. make that analysis and mm -hmm. say yes, you know, you, you're not just dreaming. Yes, you right. you indeed could come, right. could get thirteen million dollars sure. if you if you wanted it. Right. So, yeah. Did you with the SBA loan? You typically have to come up with ten percent down. Did you have to right. to figure that out? We were able to finance that out of okay. our home care business. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and it, and it's in two separate pieces. So we did the first one in 2015, and we just closed at the end of 2018 with this one. So we gotcha. were able to rebuild that cash reserve sure. and then push it all across sure. the table again. <laughs> that was nice hanging <laughs> out in the bank. Let's get rid of that. Right? Yeah, what, what do we need that balance sure. for? It's <laughs> only money. That's awesome. Yeah. So I want to talk about employees a little bit. Sure. You alluded to that a little bit, how it's a challenge now in regards to hiring and all that kind of stuff. So you work on retaining your employees very well. How do you attract them initially? Um, uh, you know, any way you can. Sure. <laughs> uh, would be the first answer. The guitar on the corner, right? <laughs> um, uh, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So again, it gets back to the same piece that happens with uh, how do we get clients. Sure. So we're getting... Um, uh, the best employees we get are those that come to us from a referral from another mm -hmm. employee. Mm -hmm. um, so we offer a, a uh, incentive for employees to bring another employee oh, in. Oh, very cool. And they, very cool. And they work for a period of time and they are um, they they don't miss a shift and, sure. and that, that employee then gets a bonus mm -hmm. uh, for that. The referring employee. A referring employee. Okay. Yep. Referring employee gets a bonus for that. Um, it. Um, you know, they're very wage sensitive right now, mm -hmm. um, but there's also a factor of the why. Sure. And, and what are we doing in our, what are they, what kind of care are they going to be providing? What are they doing? Mm -hmm. So there's a balance between that. And when you talk to employees after they've been here a little while, yeah, they recognize that even more than they perhaps do when they 
when they first come in unless they've had somebody talk to them about it. Sure. So um, being able to provide one-on-one -on -one care, mm -hmm. um, very different than being in a hospital or nursing home where even even our assisted living, where you've got to be chasing buzzers. Sure. Um, and uh, you've got, uh, okay, James, time for a shower, let's go. Sure. Um, and uh, we got stuff to do. Let's we got keep stuff it to do. We got, and you only, I only got 20 minutes for you, man. We got sure. we got to get moving. Yep. Um, versus we're there for three hours, and mm -hmm. we're going to make breakfast, and we're going to have a shower, and we're going to get you sure. dressed, and we're going to chat for a little bit, and you're going to mm -hmm. be able to go at the same time. I'm doing that. I'm going down, putting a load of laundry in, or maybe mm -hmm. changing the sheets, and still talking to you and sure. checking in with you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a that's a much different pace, mm -hmm. um, and um, th they they tell us that that's a lot more rewarding work oh, to do. So the employees tell the you. employees tell us that. Interesting. So okay. A asking them, sure. You know, why Bright Star? I, uh, right. Um, just about every orientation, that's one of the first questions I ask. Tell me about your experience and why are you here? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, the, the most common, well, actually the first thing they say is, you guys offer a flexible schedule. <laughs> okay. And, and which is why we have so many. Sure. So across our whole group, we're about a little over 700 employees. Mm -hmm. And scheduling is, one of the largest tasks we have. Oh, so being able to have people say, um, I, I can only work weekends, mm -hmm. or I want, uh, I've got a regular day job, but I can go to work at seven o'clock until mm -hmm. midnight. Sure. Um, uh, I only want, um, we, we got these wonderful one hour shifts where kind of call it a shower visit. It's one okay. hours and we pay a bonus for that, mm -hmm. that shift. No, I really only want to pick up a few of those and mm -hmm. get regular clients with that. Cause sure. it's really a very part-time thing. My kids, when my kids are at school, I want to be able to do something. Sure. Um, so <laughs> the customer care managers that we have that do this scheduling. Mm -hmm. So in our Madison office, there's uh, four of those and and they have a couple of assistants running um, a, a pretty big operation in bet. terms of the number of employees. Sure. And uh, so as we do that interviewing for them, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I say to them, I said, you know, you're, you're, um, you got all the qualifications in here, but this is a hard job mm -hmm. um, because we, you're not going to tell people when they're going to go to work. Right. You're going to ask them if they want to take this shift. Sure. And um, we want to build long-term relationships with the clients. It's what clients want. They don't want to train right. a new person mm -hmm. every two weeks. They mm -hmm. want to have consistency. So you got to build this puzzle. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I ask, and people always look at me strange, but later on they say, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, if you, how are you, at, I want you just to relax a minute and think about how you feel when I say this. You've just put finished putting a jigsaw puzzle together, mm -hmm. and it's on the card table, and your little brother comes in and tips the table over. <laughs> How do you feel? Do you feel like, okay, it's a challenge, I can put that back together, or sure. are you just so frustrated you got to walk out? Sure. Because if that's the case, you're going to feel that way at 3 o'clock on Friday. What an when interesting you got your question. Week, you got your weekend built. Everybody's sure. Every shift is filled. All the clients are ready. They're, you're ready to go home and have a good weekend. Yeah. And the phone rings, which is a, kind of that iconic call, we say. It's a, it's a discharge planner at, at uh, St. Mary's Hospital saying, mm. I've got James. James needs to go home, and sure. he's going to need around-the-clock care. Sure. Which is eight eight people. To, starting to, now. Starting <laughs> at 3 o'clock. Sure. <laughs> Just go ahead and fill that for me when you get a chance. Right. Which means you've probably got to take some of these pieces you've already got here, mm -hmm. take them away from that client, and put them over here and build sure. this. and get on the phone and call, and it might be 7 o'clock at night before you get that built for the weekend. Sure. Um, and uh, you know, that, that, that's going to be the expectation. Sure. So um, that, that simple statement that the caregivers that come in say, I love that you have flexible scheduling, uh, carries a cost. Sure. You know, we have to have more customer care managers. We, right. We... Um, uh, think we pay them well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they they might debate that. But, sure, uh, <laughs> every employee <laughs> we, would. We, we, right, we think we pay them well for that, and um, but it's a challenging job. Sure, it's a challenging job because then you also have uh, clients who mm -hmm. 
may be fussy. Mm -hmm. um, lots of our clients coming in, you've, they've been independent for 80 years. Sure. I don't need anybody to come in here, but my right. daughter thinks I do. Right. Um, so they're reluctant oh, uh, to, sure. to receive the care. Okay. And so they're, they may be prone to complain, mm -hmm. thinking, okay, if I complain about this, I won't need it anymore. Right. They'll, they'll say no. I'll just prevent every employee right. from ever wanting to work with me until we run out. Right. Sure. Right. <laughs> and, and, and that's happened. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Some of them are very stubborn. <laughs> sure. You reached it. All 700 employees. Not very often. But sure. Uh, we have said, well, maybe there's another agency that might be better sure. for you. No, yeah. I get it. I totally understand, especially with that demographic. And like you, like you mentioned, where they've been independent and you're – Someone, I guess, is essentially telling them that they're not anymore. Right. I can only imagine what I would do in that case. Right. Well, what we have found uh, is that about two weeks, and two weeks you're going to expect Susie to come ah, in the morning. You're going to okay. you're going to kind of wonder, okay, if Susie can't come now. You're going to send sure send somebody else. So that's not good. Okay. So they get attached. Okay. So there is uh, recognition, perhaps, mm -hmm. that happens or. Um, it's just that habit. It's, mm -hmm. You know, you, you decide you're going to do something to sure. break a habit. You got to do it for mm -hmm. a couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden, right. it's the new deal. So, gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's so, it, so employee. You, you, I think I derailed you a bit, but no, you started okay. asking about retention of employees. And, yeah, retention and attraction. And, and, yep. a, and, a, and attraction. So that retention, we think we get with flexible scheduling, with having customer care managers in the office that mm -hmm. really get to know the person sure. and understand what's going on in their life mm -hmm. and um, be understanding if things come up because, sure. you know, things are going to happen <laughs> in life. Sure. And um, so being understanding and, and really knowing them sure. uh, is really a, an important. So that employee engagement is, mm -hmm. is, is critical for that. Sure. Um, finding them, gosh, we've got, um, I think, seven or eight recruiters oh wow in our well maybe maybe it's 10 that are employees recruiters of ours managers of ours wow. that are out there looking They're for just constantly all the looking time. each branch uh, wow. because it's very regional so sure. down in janesville and in racine and, mm -hmm. and milwaukee there are people recruiting sure. for both staffing and for because there are different employees that okay. want to work a staffing shift sure then want to work a home care shift and okay. then back to i talked about the connection where sure. there's people the staffing shifts pay more mm -hmm. um they're a full eight hour shift mm -hmm. generally or you can sign up for two months for mm -hmm. to fill this job so sure hospital may say we've got a um, maternity leave mm -hmm. and we want to we don't want to have somebody new every week gotcha so you, we get a contract of sure. sorts going and and there are people that uh you know love those particularly in the nurse arena sure uh they're looking for that kind of investment they're going to have to make in a staffing person at mm -hmm. the hospital to train you on their system and sure. so forth and they want to gotcha. keep that okay and, and sometimes they they then buy out that employee from us oh. just like a st other staffing agencies sure. have the okay. this person comes to work every day they're smiling mm -hmm. they get our system that we like them sure uh, let's go ahead and buy them out because they're having trouble finding sure finding people too they're so. all i think about that with calls on call when people are like oh i'm just going to hire my own receptionist i'm like right. Have at her, man. <laughs> We're all having that same challenge. Yep, yep. So we right. could take care of you today, or you can come back in six weeks when that person doesn't show up or quits or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's a game. Right. That's totally a game, yeah. the the unemployment the way it is now. Yeah. What is the biggest challenge in business overall for you? Right now, number of employees. Employees is, is it. It, it. It is it. Um, I think um, uh, if I go beyond, beyond employees, mm -hmm. um, um, I think it's the the uh, maintaining because our re reputation is so important. Mm -hmm. And again, this is probably more my perspective than perhaps some other people in the sure. in our businesses. But our perspective is that our reputation is everything. Mm -hmm. And and so if we've got um, 600 clients going, sure, uh, with our assisted living uh, uh, residents and our home care clients, we've got 600. We have 600 opportunities every day. For things to go well, oh sure, or wrong. Yeah, Six hundred <laughs> opportunities for things to go badly. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, again, you've got uh, you, you've got that opportunity sure. out there. Uh, people are, are out driving their cars around and sure. bumping into stuff. And right, uh, what is the likelihood at any given day that even just one of those is going to 
go awry, you know, we right? can go we can go weeks without anything that, oh wow that looks, that looks okay. like it's pretty bad now, now awesome. missing a shift is really a bad thing and that, sure. that has the opportunity to happen at every branch every mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. so they're having to scramble to fill sure. um, you know it's a caregiver's child is ill mm -hmm. school just called i gotta go pick them up mm -hmm. i can't work this shift in 30 minutes sure so the, the, those <laughs> things are going yeah those things are going all the time and and some clients have that um, flexibility to be able mm -hmm. to say okay that's we can do that a little sure. bit later today uh, it's a it's a cleaning shift they can come tomorrow mm -hmm. um, we have clients that are like that but then there are also clients we're we're it we got to right. be there right we, we can't miss it mm -hmm. um, so yeah there's there's sure. that 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 uh, that opportunity happens right. all the time. Sure. Yeah. One thing that I wanted to ask you specifically about the industry that you're in, you have to deal with people that are getting old, they're getting sick, and eventually they're going to pass away. Right. So there's this huge, I was just thinking about that on the way up here, like there's this huge emotional, I don't know, kind of cloud hanging over that eventually your clients are just going to pass one by one. And you, as a, as a business owner, have to deal with the whole financial repercussions of that. But then you also have to deal with the employees that probably had a connection to these people. Right. Maybe they worked with them for a few years and they passed away. I mean, that's everybody dies, so it's not unusual. But, but it's very real. It's a very real issue yeah. uh, for employees that build that kind of connection with uh, with clients. And part of what we um, offer is, as I mentioned early on, that we've got an, an RN case manager involved in every every case that okay. knows the caregivers that are there and certainly is aware of what the care is and sure. uh, somebody's declining what the changes are. Mm -hmm. We work really closely with the local hospice organizations. Okay. So at end of life, they're uh, they're engaged in the actual physical care mm -hmm. of the of the, through the dying process. Okay. And we're there as a supportive piece. Sure. And so you've got a lot. I got a lot of opportunity for for the most most part. You've got some sure. opportunity to anticipate that that's going to happen as a caregiver and and have a chance to talk about it. Sure. People that have been with us for a while have experienced it more more times okay and recognize their role as a caregiver is also for the family so Absolutely. for them to be able to remain calm and mm -hmm. and um, you know help the family sure with what what they're looking for at that time care for the care for the client after they've passed sure and um, that you know we get really positive comments about our caregiver about yeah. how compassionate they were during that time well and, that's awesome and often you know most times it's the first time for our family Oh, I bet. Yeah, but it's not always the first time for that caregiver. Sure. They've navigated this before, so they know what to do. And right, right. How to not make it such a transaction, I imagine. Right. So what's next for you guys? I mean, you guys have come a long way in 13 years. 13 years, take. yeah. So what's years. next? Is it more facilities, or is it more um, branching out beyond the Midwest? or? You know, that, that we're going to need some time to get this one up and to uh, to break even. Sure. Uh, this is a big investment. We need to get that up. Uh, my banker will be <laughs> disappointed if he's listening to this and I sure. say, yeah, we're, we're going right now because <laughs> we're, we're, we sure. we're not. Sure. Um, Susan and I have gotten to a spot where with these three directors of operations, we're mm -hmm. starting to, to back out of the day-to-day. -day. Well, that's awesome. Um, and uh, we just got back from a two-week trip to Peru and oh, congrats. Uh, went out on a hiking uh, hiking adventure there. We've got a trip, sure. trip planned to go to Spain and do a bike ride in the Pyrenees. Um, so we're starting to, I'm 67, and we're starting to get to the spot where we say, okay, we we don't want to give up right. being engaged in this business because it's it's wonderful business and, sure. and I'm, I'm very excited about it. But we're also starting to step away from the day-to-day -day and not sure. taking the on-call and, sure. and being in that race. So um, get, giving more of the accountability to those director of operations who then mm -hmm. pass it down to their branch managers. Sure. Um, it really is a business that uh, um, you know, we want to be engaged, mm -hmm. but f a, a, a lot of it is really trusting that management team to, sure. be, to be running it. Sure. So it gives us the flexibility to run this large of a group without going crazy. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. That's super cool. I'm proud of you in that regard. That's awesome. So there's something to be said about a little freedom to do stuff like that. Right. There's a lot to be said about it, actually. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. 
coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kateman, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist services for small businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com, as well as Draw In Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs in all stages of their business on the web at drawincustomers.com. And, of course, the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur in all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Jeff Tews of Bright Star Senior Living and Bright Star Care. Jeff, I should ask you really quick, uh, what is the best way for people to find you guys? Find us on the web. On the web. Both of those things, brightstarseniorliving.com and brightstarcare.com. Awesome. Couldn't be any easier. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at sunpraymediacenter.com. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link. Found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business. <laughs>